Well, welcome to Christ and Culture. This is Pastor Jeff Short, your Bible teacher and cultural analyst. And today we're going to be revisiting a question that I dealt with a couple months ago, soon after the tragic Hamas terrorist attack on the state of Israel and the consequences of the military action of Israel against Gaza and against the Hamas terrorists that are residing there. And that is the question of, are the Jews the still the chosen people of God? Because this topic comes up all the time. I, I'm constantly talking with people who are just adamant and strong and very firm in saying, those are God's people. The Jews are God's people. They're his chosen people. The special people of God are the Jews. And so... Some people ask me, are God's chosen people still the Jews? And when I answer that question, I always have to say, in one sense they are, but not in the total sense. And let me explain what I mean. There is no question that if you read the Old Testament, the Jewish people are God's chosen people. No question, everybody agrees if you, if you believe the Bible, if you read the Bible, if you know the Bible, you realize that God called Abraham to, to himself and promised him that he would be the father of many people, and that through the line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the history of the Jews maps out the fact that they are chosen of God for a special work on this planet. And if you look back in history, um, there are books, there are entire books, there can be entire bookshelves dealing with this one question, and that is how God has used the Jews historically to be a witness to his power and presence on this earth. So you look back at Jewish history and you'll realize that the Jews are God's chosen people, chosen vessel to bring forth, for example, the revelation of the Old Testament, the first five books of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. You have Joshua, Judges, and all. You just go on, name all of the books of the Old Testament. And these books have gone out all over the world and have taught the world specifically the doctrine of monotheism, that is, the belief in one God, Uh, because there were many pagan nations at the time that believed in many, many gods, polytheism, and there were all kinds of superstitions and false religions, uh, just like there are today, but it was rampant in the old times, ancient times, that most people were so confused they believed in these many gods. You can look at the Romans, you can look at, go back even further to the Greeks, They had this old pantheon of gods, just very, very contradictory and chaotic understanding of the nature of reality. And then the Jews came along and God used them to school or teach the world about the truth of monotheism and and opening the way of understanding about uh, sacrifice, uh, sin, taught the world, gave the world the law of God and then the means by which to be forgiven through the sacrifice, blood sacrifice, and so on and so forth. You can just go through all the Old Testament. God clearly has used the Jews as his chosen people, and then ultimately to bring about the Messiah, Jesus Christ, who died himself as an atoning sacrifice for the sins of the world, and that out of the death of Christ and the resurrection came forth the Christian church, And then a change occurred in the operation of God, and that is, it's no longer just this one nation who is called by God and chosen by God. Now, the people of God are the Christian believers who have embraced, through the cross of Christ, God the Father, and serve and worship Him in the fullness of the Holy Spirit. These are now the people of God. Whereas before, it was exclusively the Jewish people who were the chosen people of God. Now, in the church, it is the Christian body of Christ that is the people of God, the chosen people of God. Now, does that mean that 
God is done with the Jews. Does that mean that they are no longer chosen in any sense? No, it, it's, it does not mean that. And there are some people confused and saying, well, um, now that the Jews have rejected Jesus and have rejected the New Testament revelation, God has tossed them aside and doesn't care about them. That's false. That's, that's totally wrong. It doesn't even fit with the New Testament. The New Testament shows that God does have a future intent, future plans for the Jewish race, the people, the Jewish um, ancestry, people with DNA that are Jewish. God has a plan, a future plan for them in the end times. So he has this past history of his chosen people, the Jews, and then he has a future plan for the formerly, primarily chosen people on earth, the Jews, but it doesn't make the Christians in the, in the Christian church a second-rate uh, entity in God's eyes. And so that's the problem with people who go around saying, well, the Jews are God's specially chosen people. And so we, we have to, whatever the Jews say or whatever the Jews are doing, uh, we have to support Israel in every single aspect of whatever they're doing because they're God's chosen people. Well, it's true in one sense that they are God's chosen people because they're still chosen by God for a future task, and they were chosen by God in the past to bring about huge influence on the world. It, you know, God promised Abraham, through your seed, I will bless the world. Well, certainly he has done that. That is a prophecy fulfilled, and it it's even yet to be fulfilled in its fullness in the future, because Paul in the book of Romans says that uh, when the Gentile time has filled up, or when the Gentiles, the fullness of time, the Gentiles world has filled up to the capacity, then all Israel will be saved. So there will be a massive turning uh, to Christ by ethnic Jews. And whether that means the majority of them, or it probably is not meaning literally that every single Jew who identifies as a Jew will turn to Christ. It, it just means that maybe a majority of Jews at some future end time scene will become Christians and God will open their hearts. But at the present moment, the majority mainstream Judaism is still in stubborn rebellion and rejection of God who revealed himself in Jesus Christ. So they're in rebellion against God the Father who sent the Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross as an atoning sacrifice. And if you look back at Jewish history, the temple was destroyed in the first century by the Romans. And since that time, there has not been any kind of animal sacrifice. The whole blood atonement sacrificial system of the priests, that hasn't been active. And the synagogue model, which is basically teaching of the writings of the Old Testament. But at the very heart of the Jewish religion, the temple sacrifices, that has not been taking place for 2,000 years. So you have a religion that's basically the key element and the beginning, the core of it was gutted by the Romans in the first century, and for 2,000 years it hasn't had that. Now, for 2,000 years after the sacking of Jerusalem and the burning down of the temple by the Romans, the Jews have been scattered about. Some have remained in or around the Holy Land, but many of them have fled all over to the nations of the world but then in 1948, the Jewish state, the modern secular Jewish state was born, and Jews from all over the world have been congregating in the Holy Land to return to the promised land that God had given them. Now, there is no question in the Bible from a biblical Christian perspective that the Holy Land, that land, sometimes called Palestine now, but it's actually the Holy Land, land of Canaan, was promised by God to the Jews. There's no question about that. There's no question that God called the Jews in the Old Testament his chosen people. There's also no question that God promised them 
the land now being occupied by the Jews in the modern Jewish state. And they have not actually owned that land and been able to hold that land for 2,000 years until 1948. So I do believe that it's a very significant event when the Jews return to the Holy Land. And so they have a title on that Holy Land. They were given that land by God. Ethnic Jews were given that land by God. And there's no indication that he has removed that promise. There's no indication that he has revoked the deed on that land. God Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, God of all reality, gave a certain chosen people that land. That ethnic group was given that land. And so, you know, sometimes we hear uh, all kinds of laments about people in Gaza and the Palestinians and even Christians. There are Christian Palestinians in Gaza and in the West Bank, and it's really hard for them because on the one hand, they love Jesus. They've converted from, maybe they've converted from Islam, or maybe they were raised as Christians by Christians who settled in that area. And maybe their family has owned land in the Holy Land for many generations, and maybe even going back 100 or 200 years, they've owned farms, they've owned land, they've owned homes. That has been their family land and inheritance for hundreds of years. And then suddenly the Jews returned to their homeland, and then after World War II, because of the Holocaust and the atrocities of the Holocaust, the Jews were given their land back, the Holy Land, the one that God gave them, that plot of land that God gave them in the New Testament. It's, I mean, the Old Testament, it's all there. It's very plain to see in the Old Testament that, according to the Bible, that that land was given to the Jews by God uh, and then conquered by Joshua with the assistance of God and cleared out for his chosen people, the Jews. Okay, so it's very difficult for Palestinian, even say Palestinian Christians, to be told, okay, well, now you have to move because the Jews are coming back into the Holy Land and your land lies on the Holy Land and you have to move because it's the Jews now. And so I'm sure there were all kinds of anger and bitterness and resentment on the part of many people who were told, your land is now Jewish land, uh, whether it was owned by Christians or Muslims, they were told they had to leave, and they did. And so that is difficult. It's hard. It's a, it's a difficult place for me. But I think if you're a Jewish, if you're a Palestinian Christian, and you're told that you have to leave the land of your family inheritance in the Holy Land because the Jews are now returning in 1948, you have to look at the Bible, and you have to say, well, I don't like this, but... It's right because the Jews actually do own this land. The ethnic Jews were given this land by God Almighty. And so if you're a Palestinian Christian and you look at the Bible, you'll realize just along with everybody else that the Jews own the Holy Land because God gave it to them. So if you can show someplace in the Bible that God gave you land, then you have a case. But if you don't have anything in the Bible that shows that you were given land by God, then you have to yield to what God has done, and that is give the land of the promise land to the Jews. Now, it doesn't seem to be the case where anywhere in the Bible, God basically takes the title deed from that land away from ethnic Jews. So as, as far as we can see from the Bible, that title of that land known as the Holy Land is still... Uh, rightfully Jewish land. And so that's the reality that everyone has to work with, even Palestinians of all types, whether they're Christian or Muslim. And now the Muslims won't accept that. They will say that this land was conquered by Muslims, and so there can never be a returning of a land conquered by Muslims to its previous owner. It must always remain Muslim. Well, um, that's, that's a false teaching and Muslims are just going to have to get 
used to the reality that this land is actually Jewish land. Now, if you're a Christian, you have to yield to the biblical uh, text, which say that this land is Jewish land. So, given to the ethnic Jews. Again, it doesn't mean that we have to, as Christians looking on to the situation today, have to agree with every policy or every uh, military action or every decision that the modern state of Israel makes. No, uh, we can be critical of uh, many different things that are done over there. In fact, um, a lot of the things that are done in the politics and in the government of the modern state of Israel, we would disagree with as Christians because it's a very secular state. And there are lots of unbelieving, secular, even atheistic Jews who have influence in the modern state of Israel. So by no means does everything that comes out of Israel have to be rubber stamped by Christians of, of all types around the world because we can, in fact, disagree with uh, some things that Israel does, even much of what it does. But we do agree with the Jews in the modern state of Israel that it is their land. They have a title to that land. God gave them that land. And we also have to say that they are, in some sense, still God's chosen people, but not in an absolute sense. And that's the difference. In the Old Testament, they were, in an absolute sense, God's chosen people. Now, they are only God's chosen people in a secondary way, because the primary movers and shakers on the earth today in respect to God's will and respect to God's mission are Christians. We have to believe that. We have to believe that. If you don't believe that, then you may as well just take the entire New Testament and remove it from the Bible and basically just make Christianity some kind of a subset of Judaism, a little footnote in the history of God, if you're going to do that. Uh, but you can't do that. You, Jesus came, he died on the cross, he rose from the dead, and he birthed the Christian church. And this is a new thing that was birthed on the earth after Jesus ascended at Pentecost, the Holy Spirit poured out on all flesh, uh, and it spread to all people, the J Jews and Gentiles. So uh, the, the Great Commission is go into all the world and preach the gospel and start in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. So it isn't just the one people, this ethnic group, Jews, who are God's chosen people now. It's everyone who by faith trust in Jesus Christ and have their sins forgiven and follow Christ in the new covenant. So that's what the new covenant means. So God is doing a new thing with the new covenant and he's created a new people, uh, a new chosen people, and that is the Christians and the Christian church. So they're the new people of God. Does that mean that the Jews, the ethnic Jews, are no longer God's chosen people? No, they are in the sense of what God has called them to do in the past and is what God is calling them to do in the future. Even the New Testament, the New Covenant talks about that. So they're still called and they're still chosen in a sense, but it's not the same as it was before the time of Christ. Uh, things have changed. If you want to look about what has changed, read the book of Hebrews in the New Testament, uh, a new and better covenant has been instituted. And so under the old covenant, the ethnic Jews were the exclusively special, chosen, the apple of God's eye people, and God moved, they were the movers and shakers on earth to spread the will of God on earth. But then once Jesus comes, God in the flesh, you have to realize the impact and the importance of God appearing on earth in Jesus Christ, the greatest and fullest revelation of God ever given from heaven, and the impact of that. Now it's not just the Jews are God's called and chosen people, it's the Gentiles also who believe. And so you have a new thing happening, which is the New Testament church is born, and Christians are now the chosen people of God. They're the primary movers and shakers in the world to 
spread the will of God and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ and to help save souls and help people live according to the will of God. So you can't come in on top of everything that God has done through the Christian church and everything he said that the church is, his new people of God, the new chosen people of God, the new special people of God, the new, the new, uh, everything, you know, the newness of the new covenant. You can't come over top of that and say, well, the ethnic Jews are still the chosen people of God. They are in the sense um, of what they did in the past and what they, God is going to call them to do in the future. And we still don't know exactly what that will work out to be because the book of Revelation and the Old Test or the New Testament writings don't spell it out exactly. But there is uh, there are hints and prophecies about what God is going to do and use uh, ethnic Jews still uh, in the future. So God's not finished with ethnic Judaism yet, but they are not God's chosen people in the primary sense, and that is the Christian and the Christian church. And you have to qualify it. Now, so when you're talking to people and they say, well, the Jews um, are God's chosen people. The modern state of Israel is is filled with the chosen people of God. They're special, um, and God has a mission to use these people. Uh, yes, that's true in a qualified sense today. But that does not mean that the same thing as it did in the Old Testament because we have a New Testament, and we have a new covenant with God. And in the new covenant, Christians are the primary movers and shakers in the world. They are the apple of God's eye. They are the special called people. They are the ones that will uh, go to heaven and spend eternity with God. Uh, Most of the Jewish people today who have rejected Jesus Christ, the only means of salvation. You know, it says in the book of uh, Acts, it says uh, there is only one name under heaven by which men must be saved, Jesus Christ. So if if there's only one way to the Father, and that is through the Son, then if you're a, a Jewish unbeliever in Jesus, you are not going to go to the Father when you die. You're not going to go to heaven when you die. You have to come through the Son, Jesus Christ. So before you die, if you're a Jewish person, if you're an ethnic Jew, you have to come through Jesus Christ like everybody else. And if you don't, then you shall perish. It's John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. You have to believe in the son. You have to put your trust in Jesus Christ or else you're not saved. And so Uh, What good is it to be a part of a heritage, the Jewish uh, people, and to have the status of uh, a formerly chosen people, and even chosen in the sense that the future uh, God has plans for ethnic Israel, but what good is it if you're not going to be with God the Father for all eternity after you die, and you die and you perish, and you go to the place of damnation? What good is that heritage, and what good is that label chosen people if ultimately you're not even saved. So Christians are God's chosen people primarily today, and Jews can be a part of that. Um, Jews can be a part of the uh, doubly chosen people because they can be historically chosen, and then they can be spiritually chosen in Christ, and they can have the best of everything if they would only believe in Jesus Christ. Now, thank God there are many, many Jews today that are becoming Christians through organizations like Jews for Jesus and all kinds of Jewish outreach. Uh, But don't let anybody say that we don't have to evangelize Jews. They have to come to the Father just like everybody else through the Son. There's no special track that they're on that they can reject Jesus, they can oppose the gospel, they can be enemies of Christ and still wind up in fellowship with God forever in heaven just by virtue of being uh, labeled ethnic Jew. No, there is no plan of salvation apart from 
the great commission that Jesus gave his disciples and the one that we all know as the gospel. There's no plan of salvation. If there were, why in the world did the apostles after Pentecost preach the gospel to the Jews? You have to realize that the people gathered in that uh, Pentecost scene, they were ethnic Jews that had come from different parts of the world, and Peter warned them and called them to repent and called them to faith in Jesus Christ. Now, so, so if there's a separate track for Jews, why spend and waste time trying to get Jews converted when they're already good to go and they're saved anyway? No, it's, it's, not, it's not true. Now, there are some people today, you'll hear them, uh, especially liberal Protestants, and you'll hear liberal Catholics, and you'll hear uh, some misguided uh, Christians who will say that uh, the Jews, uh, God has a special plan for them that includes salvation apart from Jesus Christ or some other means other than the gospel. It's, it's just simply not true. It goes against everything in the New Testament that we know about salvation and the plan of salvation. And it, it totally contradicts the efforts of the early church to try to win uh, Jewish converts. So, so you have Peter preaching at Pentecost. You have the whole book of Acts um, trying to evangelize Jewish people. Um, and then also you learn that the Gentiles are, are eligible for uh, status in Christianity, and so they become converts. But there's never a, an effort to stop evangelizing Jews because, you know, they have their own special track of salvation. No, that's a contradiction of Christianity. So don't, don't let anybody tell you that God saves Jews apart from Jesus Christ, or God saves Jews apart from uh, faith in, in Christ, or that he saves them apart from the gospel, or saves them apart from the New Testament, or that the New Testament only applies to the Gentile believers. No, no, that, the gospel and the, and the New Testament first applied to the Jews, in and around Jerusalem, and in Judea, and into Samaria, and to the uttermost regions of the Promised Land, and then only later went to the Gentiles, and they were brought into the church. But the, initially, the first entire bedrock church was all Jewish believers. So there is no salvation apart from Christ. There is no name under heaven given among men by when which men must be saved other than Jesus. Um, there is no way to the Father except through the Son. So we need to think through these issues clearly. We need to be very, very precise in our language. Yes, the Jews are still God's chosen people in a sense. They are in a secondary sense still God's chosen people primary chosen people today, and the primary called, the primary specially um, blessed people today that God is using and working through are Christians, not Jew ethnic Jews. And we look to a time in the future when Jews will be brought into the Christian church, and then they too will be historically God's chosen people and in the present men, uh, time chosen by God through Jesus Christ. So we need to look very carefully at these issues and not be swayed by emotions or what we hear other people say. We need to go to the Bible and think them through biblically, and then only then can we make statements about Jews and Christians together today. See you back next week. God bless.